If this had been an actual emergency, such as a hurricane or tornado, official messages would have followed the alert tones. WOCA serves the Marion County area. This concludes the test of the emergency alert system. Hey Ocala, this is Kelly Hart, executive editor of Ocala Magazine. Did you know last year Ocala Magazine won more awards and excellence than any other publication in Florida? And this year, Ocala Magazine was named best consumer magazine in the state. Now you can join me every Friday at 10 a.m. on Ocala Magazine Radio, where we bring the pages of Ocala Magazine to life, right here on The Source. Ocala Magazine thanks you for making us number one. And remember, there is only one Ocala Magazine. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Five minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. If you look around yourself and all the things that are in your room, uh, everything started out with an idea. If I look at this microphone, somebody had the idea to have to make this microphone, and I'll just extend that to everything else in the room. Even if you include it to to uh, plants and trees, you know, well, you could say that was the idea of God, right? But nothing happens with just ideas. You have to do something with the idea. You can't just say, I'm going to take a walk. You have to take the walk, right? You have to do in order to get things done. It's kind of a simple, simple, uh, but often overlooked part of being successful. Um, Somebody is on the phone who has written about this in a very eloquent way, and I believe he's calling in from Ireland. Am I right, Robin? Yes. Ryan O'Reilly is uh, an adventure cyclist, a marathoner. What is that, 26 miles or something? Uh, he's an executive coach, a senior sales leader for Apple and Dell. He's an associate certified coach with the International Coaching Federation. He was nominated as a finalist in the International Coaching Federation Ireland Coach of the Year Awards. And he's written this book that I was just kind of um, paraphrasing a little bit from. Uh, it's called Shifting Gears, How to Harness Your Drive to Reach Your Potential and Accelerate Success. Ryan O'Reilly, um, if you think this way all the time, then you must be a very successful person. I, <laughs> good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I'm okay. Uh, thank you for being on the air with us. And so you're in Ireland right now? I'm in Ireland right now, yes, indeed. So How? we're at 3 p.m. here um, ahead of you, so we're uh, five hours ahead. It's on my bucket list. I always wanted to go to Ireland. It looks like such a beautiful, beautiful place. It is. It is. It's, it's, it's may, maybe as beautiful as Florida. I'm not sure, but um, it is a fantastic place to come and visit for sure. We're, we'd be glad to have you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so tell me about uh, your, your philosophy on getting things done and, and the philosophy that you put into the book, Shifting Gears. Well, uh, the philosophy I put into the book was that, you know, I think we all start out with really good intentions in life about where we want to end up. And um, personally, what happened to me was I found myself stuck in my circumstances. And uh, at the time, it didn't seem like that could change. And it, it, seemed like, it, it seemed like that there was no way out of the circumstances I was in or the job I was in. I had a bad boss and there was, there was a bad circumstance behind the whole thing. Um, and then it got me thinking about the whole, you know, ability to just to move, like you said there in the introduction, to take actions, actually move forward and do something. Yeah. And I got thinking about trying to share that with other people because I've seen people, you know, just stuck in their careers and, and in life um, and not doing anything about it. So I thought I'd write the book to try and help them out. Isn't it interesting, though, that people do get stuck? I, we, I, it, where we live, it's kind of an, uh, a rural area, and um, when I was younger, I used to drive past some of the farms that had cows on them or in them, and I, I used to think, gosh, if I was a cow, I would walk off of that. I would just get out of there. <laughs> yeah, but it, it seems easy, It seems easy. But, but then in your own life, you say, well, wait a minute, I have a job I'm not happy with. I can't just walk away from that. But the truth is you can. Yeah, the truth is you can, yeah, is right. And I suppose it's all to do with mindset, really, and how we approach our problems in life. But there isn't a person out there that hasn't gone through some sort of, um, you know, problem in life, personally or professionally. Um, and I suppose what we do is we stay there because it's comfortable sometimes, and we don't uh, we don't um, put pressure on ourselves to get out of that comfortable place. Well, the one thing about running a marathon, and I've never done it, <laughs> but, I, but I'm going to talk about it anyway, is that I'm sure the very first time you thought about it, 
it looked like it was insurmountable, insurmountable, whatever is the correct word. Um, am I right? And then you decided, okay, I'm going to do it. And once you decided, then you started working towards that. Am I right so far? That's exactly it, Larry. Um, I actually had moved to California about um, about 10 years ago, and I smoked cigarettes at the time. And um, I, I started, I gave up the cigarettes, and I said, all right, if I can run to the end of the street, I'll be doing well and I got there the first night and then the second night I got to the end of the next street um, and, and on I kept going until I was running six or seven miles a day and planning to do a marathon and it was really just small steps that I took every day you don't have to make a huge change you just have to go out and do something um, and then try and build in a habit that builds into something else and that's where the scary part comes in because everybody has to pay their rent they have to buy food they have to take care of their children buy gasoline for their vehicles and once you have a job and you're working for somebody else it's hard to have that entrepreneurial spirit and try to go out on your own yeah it is and you know and i can empathize with that as well like three small children and um you know i was the sole income provider for a while in my family and there was a lot of there's a lot of pressure there for people to provide and pay bills um robin you're dead right but at the same time you know you don't have to make a drastic change um, it doesn't have to be you know this uh, career career changing moment it can be just small things in your own daily habits about self-care even and protecting yourself and making sure that you're you know that you're doing things that you love and you're passionate about that might build into something else later on oh gosh robin and i in in a in a past life we did uh, music for children and one of our songs was called you can be whatever you want and one of the criticisms we had from people on on the internet was how dare you tell children they can be anything they want you know that's not true and my re reply to that criticism was you can be anything you want to be i'm not saying and we're not saying in the song that you'll earn money at it <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I, I, and I, I think about this all the time. I, how many people do you know that wanted to be a professional baseball player or a rock and roll star or, gosh, you name it, and some of those things fall flat and you never become those things? But that doesn't mean you can't be on a baseball team. You might not get paid for it. Or you, can't, you can play in a band. You, you might not get paid for it. Mm -hmm. But you can do those things. Yeah, correct. Um, you know, like I, I, I'd love to be, I'd love to be an Olympian athlete. You know, and, you know, it, physically, I'm never, I'm never going to get there, and I have to be realistic about that. But at the same time, I can get out and I can run, um, and you know, I'm able to do things like that. And uh, and I suppose, you know, kids have to believe they can do anything. Um, you know, you can't take that away from kids. It's not, it's not the great wonder of childhood is that you can believe in anything um, and that you can do anything. Um, and there's so many examples out there in the world where people have just chased their dreams and got there and beaten all the odds. One of them. Um, you know, lots, lots of examples there in the U.S. recently of that as well, right? So I think you're um, right. Yeah. So. so. I, th I think one of the things you point out in the book is absolutely dead on is that when we're trying to figure out how to do something, um, quite often there's a mentor out there that would love to share with you how he or she did it all before you. And you talk about mentors in the book, and I was going to ask you if you could do that right now. Just talk about the importance of finding somebody who could help you. And the good news is, whatever you want to do in life, um, you know, for the, for the most part, there's somebody else who's done it before you. So. Yeah. For example, if you if you want to be a world class DJ, you know, on a world class station, you're going to go to someone like Larry or Robin and, and say, "Guys, how have you done it?" Right? And um, you know, there's somebody who's done it before. And what happens with most people is they reach a certain point in their career where they want to give back to the people who are coming behind them. And um, so, you know, whether that's um, you know an executive accountant, uh, a CEO, whether that's you know your boss, whether that's someone else. You know, there's there's mentors everywhere. They might surprise you. Um, one of my mentors is one of my neighbours, and he's a former school teacher, and just really good with advice because he's he's seen a lot and he's done a lot in his life. So he's one of my mentors. But there's mentors everywhere, and it, you know, when you change gears or you you kind of move forward to a new destination where you're going, or it's, or it's new or it's scary, having mentors around you really helps you keep focused on where you're going rather than doing it all on your own. 
The book is called Shifting Gears. It's written by our guest Ryan O'Reilly, and he's calling in from uh, Ireland. I wanted to ask you something about the book itself, because the book, in a way, is like running a marathon. Before you wrote the book, you must have thought to yourself, oh my gosh, that's going to be a lot of writing. Did, did you have a mentor, or did you have a, a plan to uh, accomplish this, this goal? I mean, you accomplished an amazing goal. A lot of people want to write a book, but they don't. Mm-hmm. I know I had uh, yeah I had kind of um, I, I I had ambitions to write a book for a long time and um, I suppose a lot of people do as you say Larry quite rightly and um, and one of the things I did was I heard I heard somebody I heard a writing coach that would help me you know format and and get the chapters right and and she was really like an English teacher of old you know so I'd ring her every week and she'd say no that's that's terrible writing write it again you know and uh, and it was really good to keep me on track and I don't think if I had that. I, 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 if I didn't have that I don't think I would have got as far as I would have got or maybe I would have procrastinated or delayed it a little bit right. and, and, even, and even as I was writing it and even when I was finishing it and editing it, editing it my writing coach kept saying to me you're an author and, and that took a while to even settle in so even um, the fear of it being successful uh, started to become an issue if that makes sense um, so it's really important to kind of um, look at things and chunk them up you know um, like if it's a marathon or writing a book you know, it's just do a bit every day. It, it, you know, half an hour every day. It's towards something, towards your goal. It's a lot better than doing nothing, and uh, and that's the way I approach the writing. And uh, this is uh, extremely important in the world of sales. I mean, you have been a super salesperson for Apple and Dell, and now you have to be a salesperson for yourself with your book. That to me would seem more difficult than being a salesperson for somebody else. Yeah, true, but um, I, I actually love it because it's a topic that um, you know I, I'm very passionate about, and I really, I really am a potentialist, and I love just seeing people step out of their comfort zones and kind of step into their own potential. Yeah, and yeah. if someone can get that out of the message, then I, I'm more delighted to sell it to everyone. To be honest, so. <laughs> Ryan, I, w- I want to go back to the coach. You said you had a coach, and you also said that in the course of writing the book, she would um, tell you what you did wrong. And, and one of the things that we have a tendency to do as people is that when somebody tells us we did something wrong, we, uh, are, we get our defenses up and we say, no, 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 you're wrong. I didn't get anything wrong, right? We, we fight mm-hmm. back. But it's very smart of you and anybody who has a mentor or a coach to pay attention to the critiques, to the criticisms, because I really truly think that's how we get the bumps out of the road. That's how we smooth it down is, is by... Because if you if you showed it to your mother, let's say, and every every word you wrote, she said, "Oh, this is wonderful, right?" Yeah, it's <laughs> you're never you're never going to get better at it, right? Uh-huh. But I think somebody who's honest with you, you know, I think you're going to be you, it's going to be a bi- a bitter pill or whatever they say, and you're going to become better. Yeah, I think there's a balance there. I think you know, there, I think as long as the person has you in very positive regard and you know is not being um, critical. Or being, um, you know, so so cynical of you. Oh right, self belief is starting to waver. Um, and I was very lucky, my writing coach, because half of the, half of the writing coach session that we had with her, uh, she she'd be she'd be telling me what uh, what I did well, and then the other half she'd be telling me what I didn't do too well. Uh-huh, but uh-huh. that helped me get better. Um, you know, like if I, if I remember writing first. Uh, the first chapter I sent to her, she was like, "Yeah, you know what? The first couple of pages are good, but the rest you got to do again." And I was distraught. But you're right. You know that that kind of feedback helped me to go and, and persevere and, and you know keep practicing it and keep writing better and trying to get something that looked good. Uh, the the uh, wow, you're exciting. the book is called Shifting Gears: uh-huh. How to Harness Your Drive to Reach Your Potential and Accelerate Success. Ryan O'Reilly is the author. We will take a little break and we will be right back. Ryan, I think you're pumping us all up. We'll be right back with with Ryan. This is WOCA. <laughs> Here are the categories. I'll take Mike Scott Plumbing for a thousand, please, Alex. Answer. Nearly double. I'll wager five thousand. All right. Here is the clue. PU is the type of this complication. What is a sewage backup? Yes, that's right. 
It's all fun and games until something happens to you, like a septic system failure or a clogged drain or line, leaving you saying P.U. But not to worry. Mike Scott Plumbing is there to get you out of that jeopardy and back on track. And they don't charge extra for nights, weekends, or holidays. From septic pumping to lawn irrigation to high-efficiency water heaters, at Mike Scott Plumbing, if water runs through it, we do it. Stop by one of the newly renovated showrooms in Hernando or Wildwood or call today, 237-2888. That's 237-2888. Mike Scott. Next Generation MD is the future of healthcare now. Listen in the first and third Thursday at 10 a.m. to learn how the future in PRP treatments are here in our area. Find out the many ways that Dr. Juan Jordan, MD, Charles Brooks, NP, and case manager Mark Shaw have brought the family medicine practice to a new level. Hear from the very people that benefit from the fine work they have done in this field. Next Generation MD, every first and third Thursday at 10 a.m. here on WOCA 96.3 FM, 1370 a.m., The Source. We all know the importance of good health, but we may not know the latest advances in medicine that are available to us. Monday at 9 a.m., Bern Paraiso will be our roving medical reporter to tell us about Seven Hill Gastroenterology PA and Dr. Reddy. We'll discuss screening techniques and more. So tune in and listen. This is more than news you can use. It's news that could save your life. That's Monday at 9.05 a.m. Hi, I'm Leah Caruso with Strive Rehabilitation, inviting you to join me Thursday at 11 a.m. for Health Matters. Ocala Health and Strive have teamed up to bring you the latest information on good health services available to you right here at home. This vital information will help you make informed decisions about your health. So don't forget to join me here at 11 a.m. Thursday. It's news you can use from Ocala Health, Strive, and your friends here at WOC. 20 minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Ryan O'Reilly is on the phone over in Ireland. He has written the book called Shifting Gears. I just went to Amazon during the break, by the way. It's got five star reviews. In, in fact, that's all it's got is five star reviews. There are nothing, There's nothing less than five stars. One of the reviewers uh, says this book is well named as it is a bit like going on a road trip. And I, I kind of like that, uh, that way of uh, uh, comparing it to something. And in fact, I said to you, Ryan, that uh, Ireland is on my bucket list. And so it occurred to me that if it's on my bucket list and I'm going to listen to what you're saying, then I have to say, okay, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to go. I'm going to go one day to Ireland. So do, do you ever do you ever look at at a goal that you want to accomplish and work backwards? Like you say, okay, you, like you went to California. Did you say, I'm going to go to California. Here's when I'm going to do it. Here's how I'm going to do it. Here's how I'm going to pay for it. And all those things, all those questions, once they're answered, you can do it. Yeah, that's such a great point, Larry. Um, that's exactly the way um, you should look at your goals. So, you know, um, there's a great uh, method in sports psychology, um, which I'm really interested in, and it's called visualization. And what they do is they get athletes to visualize themselves scoring the goal or scoring that touchdown or scoring that basket, whatever it might be. Um, and it's working back and how you feel in those moments and how you feel when you get to your goal and what it's going to be like crossing the finish line and whatever goal it might be. Or, you know, sipping the whiskey in, in Ireland for your case, Larry, for example, you know, in, in the nice pub, whatever it might be. <laughs> and so, you know, so, it, so it's, it's really it's really about just um, picturing yourself doing it. And you mentioned California there. I worked for Apple in 2003 in Ireland. And uh, the, about six months in after I got my feet in the door, I told my boss, I said, I'm going to California. And he started laughing at me. And I said, no, I don't think you realize how driven I am. I'm going there. Um, and two years later, in 2005, um, I, I arrived over there to work there for three years. Um, and, you know, I, I, I was the happiest guy in, in the planet. Um, you know, it was just a life goal to work over there and work with a company like Apple. Um, but I had done exactly that, work backwards from the goal. So how do I get there? How do I get the results to get there? How do, mm-hmm. how do I convince my management to get there? Um, what are the little wins I can do to get along the way? Um, and then when you get there, you know, it's not such a surprise and it's not so much to, to hope or chance. Yeah, I, I think one of the things we just went through in this country, and I know you know this, is an election. And one of the things, and I'm not trying to be political here, but one of the things, and I'm not just talking about the presidential candidates either. We had local candidates as well. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I think voters were looking for were candidates that had vision, some somebody who had an idea of what the future could be. And and uh, and I'll leave it at that. I don't want to 
make any comments on any of the people. But 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 I th- but I think that's what we want. We want that in other people who are our leaders. Gosh, we definitely should have it in ourselves. We should, we should, and you're dead right there. You know, there's nothing stopping you having a vision, a better vision of where you are at five years, ten years from now. You know, there's absolutely nothing. And even to get a blank piece of paper and just draw out what your life should look like in five years' time, um, I I couldn't tell you how many people don't do that. Um, You know, there's it's probably 90% of the people I meet or coach, the first session I do is I just put a piece of paper in front of them and tell them, draw draw me your life in five years' time. What does it look like? What do you want? Um, Yeah. What do you focus on those things? Um, and you know when you, when you do that it kind of really uh, helps you create that vision for yourself for where you want to end um, or, or where you want to end up and it's really really important to do that and I'm even doing that now at the moment I'm looking at what, I, what I'm trying to do in the next five years with my business and um, and, I, and I have a big plan of a big whiteboard here in front of me and it's 2020 I'm talking about which is a little bit far off for a lot of people but that's, that's how we do it that's it yeah uh, you talk about uh, negotiating skills in your book and also efficiency and those are very two important things if you want to better yourself yeah absolutely I think negotiation with yourself is probably the key first one there uh, Robin because you know like I think we we talk ourselves out of a lot of stuff you know um you know, um, for years I'd be saying to my mate on New Year's Eve, I'm going to do a triathlon this year. But I couldn't even swim. So oh. I mean, it, was a little bit of a, it was a little bit of a, you know, a laugh between the lads. Um, they were like, oh, here's Ryan again saying he's going to do a triathlon. And and then I said, right, you know what, I'm actually going to say I'm going to learn how to swim this year instead of doing a triathlon. And that's what I did. So it's about, um, you know, negotiating with yourself first. Then figuring out ways, right, you know, right. Well, and, and yeah, in the book you say fake it until you make it, but I would advise you don't do that with swimming. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Try that with swimming; it doesn't work. <laughs> Is it easier to convince yourself to go forward and do something physical than it is to have a uh, a business and you have to do a lot of things? Uh, with being one-on-one talking to people to make your business succeed? Uh, no, I, I think small business small business ownership and entrepreneurship, I think, is the hardest thing I've ever done in a way because um, I was uh, I was in the, the safety of a large multinational, you know, and, uh, you know, the wages were good and the salary was good and the benefits were good. And then stepping out on your own, there's a little bit more risk there. And, um, you know, I'd much rather hop on my bike for a week and cycle, you know, I cycled the length of the UK there a couple of years ago just to see if I could do it. It was about a thousand miles, and um, wow. like, I, I learned a lot. I, I learned a lot from that, from a resilience perspective. But yeah, yeah. I still have to go back into my business a week later and figure out how to run my business. Yeah, so that's wow. really true. That really is true. Uh, there's a quote from Leonardo da Vinci, and he he said, "It had long since come to my attention that people of accomplishment rarely sat back and let things happen to them. They went out and happened to things." Mm-hmm. And and I, I've often thought, gosh, well that's that says so much. I mean, unless you win the lottery, yeah, you have to go out and make things happen for you. Mm-hmm. They don't usually happen to you. Uh, well, they do, but if they do, it's not always what you want. Yeah, it's not always what you want, and you're dead right. And you know, it, it doesn't have to be this massive leap. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to have it all tomorrow. You know, you just have to test a vision of where you want to land and you know I talk about fulfillment at the, at the end of the book and that's you know realising that you might be happy right now with what you have too it's not always about striving forward it might be just uh, taking stock about what you have you know yeah, yeah, yeah. For that. Um, but it's very very true to you know what Da Vinci said was that you have to go and chase it if you really want it there shouldn't be any reason why you can't get it and um, also uh, people maybe they're not alone they have a uh, spouse or uh, a uh, significant other they work with, they have to have the same vision, otherwise the relationship is going to fail. I think you're dead right, Robin, there. I think um, too often relationships break down because there's either somebody being held back in the relationship or there's someone, uh, or there's codependence going on in the relationship where, you know, they're they're holding each other back. Yeah. And I, I think it's an awful shame sometimes because, you know, um, if you have good support around you, and you hear this all the time with you ever listen to you know famous sports stars when they win competitions? They always thank their family or their friends first. Always, always, and it's, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's always, and it's that support mechanism. If you have that behind you, 
and it's always going to be easier to go and do difficult things. Mm. And and I suppose I'm looking in that regard. You know, I have a wife that's you know absolutely very supportive of anything I do, and um, you know, th- th- never would say no. You can't cycle off for, for a week or go do a marathon or anything like that. And very supportive. But at the same time, I realise there's lots of people out there that aren't that lucky that maybe are stuck in a relationship or you know are afraid to say what they'd like to do in case they're admonished for it or told that you won't be able to do it yeah and fear and yeah. Partly that's what can happen yeah, yeah. Uh, for less Gosh. than twenty dollars in fact on Amazon it's seventeen ninety five the Kindle version is twelve ninety nine this book can serve as your coach if you if you are looking to get yourself out of a rut to move on with something to get the courage to make a decision to go someplace or change careers all of the above can be done simply by getting your mind in the right place mm-hmm. and a coach can help you do that and I believe that Ryan O'Reilly has put coaching skills into this book um, so the good news is I have one copy it's if, wonderful. if you book. want it call me and I will give it to you the rest of us do have to go buy it Ryan I found it on uh, Amazon so I know it's there do you have another website you want to uh, recommend um, Ryan O'Reilly International dot com, um, and you, it's also on Barnes and Noble and Books a Million and Spam and all those other, and indie books as well. So it's available in all the online bookshops. And you know, if you go into your local bookstore and they don't have it, just ask for it and they'll, they'll be able to order. It. Okay. Um, nice. Yeah. Thanks very much for having us on today. I really appreciate it, and you know, I hope uh, people got something from the message. You absolutely, I'm sure they did. Uh, quickly, who's this? You want the book? Yes, I do. And My name's Paula. And who, what's your name? Paula. 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 Okay, Paula, you got it. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, it'll be waiting here for you. You know where we are? Okay, I'll, I'll talk to you off there. Ryan, thank you so much. Thank you, guys, and uh, have a great day. Thank Enjoy you. the rest of it. We'll be right back. Successor to the White House in a short while. President Obama vowed to do everything he can to ensure a smooth transition to a Trump administration. The president and Mr. Trump will sit down in the Oval Office. First Lady Michelle Obama will meet with Mrs. Trump in the White House residence. Fox Radio's Rachel Sutherland. The Dow just now opening on a record high. Numbers in for last week's first-time jobless claims. They were down 11,000. And we'll find out which toys make it into the National Toy Hall of Fame this year. The list of 12 nominees includes the Care Bears, the board game Clue, Dungeons and Dragons,